Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to this special grammar video. You know, lately I've been putting out a lot of videos where I react to other people's grammar and things like that. Matter of fact, it's been a, quite a flurry of those types of videos because, you know, that's what some viewers want to see and I enjoy doing them. And I enjoy looking and audit, auditing grammar and things like that because that's what I do. But in the same sense, I think some people forget what it is that I actually do and have been doing for five years in over 20,000 hours. And that's teach and perform with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. It's what I do. And it's what I do best. I have a knack for it. Some people are blessed with certain talents and this thankfully is one of mine so I highly recommend you sit back get yourself a, a, a cup of coffee or something because this is going to be a good one it's a video specifically about a hieroglyph that I've never done a video specifically on before and the reason why I'm doing it is because there's been a very minuscule amount of noise but enough to get my attention from certain areas of the quantum grammar domain um, that brought it to my attention saying Jason what's your closure on apostrophe it's no contract and actually I got into a conversation with these individuals they were uh, it was one individual and they were they were out of the Netherlands or something like that and they were trying to tell me that they had this whole styles manual written in correct sentence structure translated into Dutch and they went on and on about it you can watch a video I did about it a, a comments video I did about it and see the whole story there but long story short I asked them to prove it I said show me the styles manual show me proof of your claims and they got all offended um, they got very condescending, got very defensive, so on and so forth. And long story short, they failed. We're there with the void performance of proving their claim. And that's usually how it goes. So I can't really take that seriously because I have done videos where I do give closure on the apostrophe. Matter of fact, multiple videos. But the thing that galvanized me to make this particular video is in case anyone does have those types of questions or doubts that creep into their head because I did have a student that I've known for at least two or three years and they commented they sent me a comment asking about the apostrophe and it blew my mind that this individual having a couple years under their belt I mean they weren't doing workshops with me I think I gave them I think I did one workshop with them and that was a couple years ago but they've been basically a self studier and they asked me about the apostrophe and it blew my mind because in my mind and you know this is an assumption on my part if you've been studying this seriously for like two or three years then you would already know the answer to this it would be a moot point not only if you don't know the answer you would have the tools with which to get the answer meaning tools that are available to you and to me same tools the etymology dictionary look it up look it up and if you know the grammar mechanics you will know how the apostrophe works or how it could work in correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar so to begin with the basis of this argument and folks it is an argument because arguments only exists where facts do not exist and for the individual that was asking me the question, well, the individuals, the ones from the Netherlands and also this, the other individual who's also from overseas, I won't say where they're from, they don't have closure on what it is they're doing. That's why it's an argument for them. If it were a fact, it would be a non-issue. 
when you have closure on the facts, it's not an issue. There is no argument. So the reason why their, their argument about the apostrophe is that they're saying it's no contract because they did a rudimentary, very basic and shallow parse of the word with no with no real aim towards coming to a solution for it, only presenting a problem, and that's it. That's not the way I navigate. If I present a problem, I also present a solution, which is what I'm doing in this very video right here. It's what I do in every video that I make. If I critique someone's grammar, if I see there's something wrong with it, I tell them how to fix it in the same video. Problem, solution, rule one, rule equal. <laughs> Mind blowing stuff here, guys. All right. So let's get down to brass tacks here. This is the problem that was presented by the uh, individuals from the Netherlands. That apostrophe means no contract. I agree. The word itself, apostrophe, AP, that's a vowel in front of a consonant. It's a particle of negation. It means no contract. I agree. But guess what? If you see your screen here, is this the way we write an apostrophe? Or is this the way we write apostrophe? Is that how it's used in correct sentence structure? People from the Netherlands. Is that how you do it? That's not how I do it. All right. I'll try not to be so cheeky. This is how I do it. What's the difference, ladies and gentlemen? The difference is, this is a word, and this is a symbol. This is a hieroglyph. This is a word. This is a symbol. Do you see the difference? Good. In my Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parsi Syntax Grammar Code Dictionary, I give closure to this word. along with this symbol. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, that I started from the P. I did not include the A. I did not include the particle of negation. And I'll share that with you in a little bit, but first let's get some etymological parse closure. Let's do the work, which these individuals from the Netherlands uh, did not do, by my guess. So I'll do the work for them. So this is what I'm imagining and guessing that they did. They punched in apostrophe up here, hit the search, and came up with this. Mark indicating omitted letter. Greek, apostrophos, the accent of turning away. Thus, a mark showing where a letter has been omitted. where a letter has been omitted. Ladies and gentlemen, has a letter been omitted here? Have I taken something away here? When they're talking about letter being omitted, they're talking about something like this. In this case, it's a contraction. Can't is a contraction, meaning can not. And the apostrophe in this sense does indeed mean they're taking away the N and the O. But these are all negative conditions of state. We don't use those in correct sentence structure. Individuals from the Netherlands, if you had closure on correct sentence structure, you would know this. You would know this. 
You're not taking something away. When I use an apostrophe here, I'm adding value to it. I'm not taking anything away. So, the first part of the word, apo, means off, away from. Yes, particle of negation, 100%. And then the second part is strev, which means to wind, to turn. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to my correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, finite mean of apostrophe. Notice, I've eliminated the particle of negation here. I use apostrophe, and then I use the forward slash, which means and, and then I show the hieroglyph. Of this finite mean is with this hieroglyphic, and there it is, of the function, I'm telling you what it's used for, with the quality, I'm giving value to it, of the possessive position with the performance by this claim. Notice, notice, in this word apostrophe, you have the word post, then you also have trophy, the two particles, post trophy when you take the a away you take the particle of negation out post trophy notice we have another pos here pos here so there's a common theme here and i'm going to connect all that together as the continuance of evidence so the first part of the word, the first particle of the word apostrophe is post. Check it out. A timber of considerable size set upright. Old English post. Now, when I see Old English, that tells me that could be the earliest nativity root meaning of it because it's before the 15th and 14th century. All right. It's pretty old. And so it comes from post. Pillar. Doorpost. I have tangible contract with that. It gives basically a sense of something that's constant, right? Post upright beam. It says here now, pay very close attention, especially you individuals from the Netherlands, which is perhaps, perhaps from vulgar Latin, P-O-R fourth, a variant of pro, uh-oh. However, think about this. Go a little bit further into it, and then we go further back to this. From pi root STA to stand or make firm. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the ST part of post. But we're still looking for closure on the PO. And so far we have, which is perhaps from vulgar Latin. Perhaps. Is perhaps closure? No. Perhaps is a maybe. So let's go a little bit deeper. Let's go a little bit deeper with the POS. What other words do we find POS in? As I showed you, we have possessive, uh, position, positional. So let's try that. Position. See, we have the POS in there. It and an ION, which is contract. Posit and then contract. So now we have Watkins tentatively, kind of like perhaps or maybe, tentatively identifies it as from Proto-Indo-European PO, which means off away. See, APO. But here we go. Devan identifies it as See the difference there, ladies and gentlemen? I have to stop you right here. Apologies if it's dragging on, but this is what is necessary to get these closures. You have to look at it with a fine tooth comb and a microscope. The word they use here is tentatively. But here, there is no tentatively. It says identifies it as proto-italic 
Hazin. And now we go Proto-Indo-European to build, live. From the root T-K-E-I to settle, dwell, be home. So even though it says italic there, it doesn't matter because the earliest right here, we hit it. That is the earliest nativity root meaning of the POS. To build, live, post, position, POS. You mix that, the POS, with the ST, which means to stand. And I'm sure you've even heard Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller say ST means stand, right? I'm not saying that that's the authority of the be all end all. I'm saying that uh, using it as certification, meaning that someone else said it. It's not, not just me saying it. It's not just the etymology dictionary said it. David also said it. So we have a home and stand, to stand home, uh, to live, to dwell. Whatever it is, is dwelling there, it's standing there. Again, it gives a sense, it gives a sensation of constancy. It's a constant. A position is a constant. Now, what's the second part of apostrophe? Let's go back here. To turn from Proto-Indo-European root, streb. To turn. Okay. So now I'm going to draw this together into the use of the apostrophe. Here's the symbol. It's apostrophe. It's a constant. It's standing there. And it's turning. So we have the constant, which is a claimant, turned toward the knowledge, i.e. possessive of the knowledge. As in my correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, finite mean, which I will do backwards here for your edification. For this claim of the performance is with the possessive position of the quality with the function of this hieroglyphic with this finite mean by the apostrophe. I guess if I had a microphone, I would drop it. Because uh, that's just what I feel like doing right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is why the apostrophe is a positive performance symbol in my construct. I've gone to this depth of closure. All right. Those uh, ladies and gentlemen from the Netherlands, if they even exist, whatever they did, they were up here on the surface kind of looking at this. I dove down to the bottom as far as I could go, and that's where I got my closure. I went to the earliest nativity root meaning. All right? I didn't just skim the surface. No. I took the time to put the work in to get this closure. And I didn't just do it today. I did it years ago. I already built my foundation here. Now, you know, I've poked a little bit of fun at these people that uh, contacted me and I hope they take it as such uh, because if you're a good sport you will go far in this grammar for sure you'll be able to keep your calm and uh, be able to navigate with the peace neutrality rule one rule one rule equal and the balance of the honor and the grace and right now I am performing with the balance of the honor and the grace I'm being very graceful especially concerning the way that individual from the Netherlands was talking about me and talking to me and addressing me. It was very dishonorable and disrespectful. Lucky for him, I don't take things personal. This is directed towards him. I hope he learns from this and I hope that uh, it strengthens his construct. So let's look again. This is not what we do in correct sentence structure. We don't use the word apostrophe. Yes, it has a particle of negation. My finite mean addresses that. I've taken it out. We use it as a symbol. 
a hieroglyph denotes possession. Well, that about wraps it up for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it's been very useful and helpful to you for your closures. This is me doing the work for you. Normally, I would prefer it if the students would do their own work, but I understand that it's difficult for some, that some people, I mean, and this is almost, I mean, it should be criminal that this stuff is not taught in school how to parse. And, and I have to give a shout out, you know, with all the humility in the world that I can muster and also a, a fond memory for me is that when I was a freshman in high school, I had a teacher whom I remember as Mr. Ponser, who got me started in Parse and studying Parse. It was my most favorite thing in the world, my most favorite class. Whatever else was going on with me in high school as a freshman, I'm sure you're all familiar with, with the ter tumultuousness of, of that uh, condition of, of state, that time in our lives. This guy really got me interested in grammar and, and turned into a lifelong love of, love of it, which I've parlayed into what I'm doing now. Uh, but And also on another note, I was a C student in his class, but I was his favorite student, but he was still fair with me, you know, because I was still learning. But this is where it started from. And lucky for me, I had a teacher like him. Not everybody is that fortunate. And so, as I was saying, I think we are not taught these tools. That's another reason why I highly recommend learning the trivium method, grammar, logic, rhetoric. Because when you learn that, you can study and learn anything on your own. You don't need a teacher. It gives you all the tools you need. Uh, well, with the exception of correct sentence structure, I'd have to say, because I have never, ever, ever seen anyone in my five years of teaching that has ever learned this on their own, I had to have a tutor, at least to polish off uh, the rough edges at the end of your learning, you definitely need it as someone who's experienced and has closure on it. And I highly recommend it before you go into any of the more dangerous venues of using this. So uh, I'll wrap this up with, uh, let you know that this is my gift to you. This is another grammar video. Video, As I said, you know, I've been doing a lot of reaction videos and things like that, and I thought it was time to throw out a couple videos of deep value and quality, such as this one and then one I did uh, before about the mini class with correct sentence structure. If you do feel like supporting me and supporting this channel, if you look over here, you'll see that join button. You can support my work by doing by clicking on that and choosing one of the two tiers. If you choose the first tier, I appreciate it. That's just sending a small value to me to let me know that you appreciate what it is I do and you appreciate the over 400 videos that I've already published here and put the blood, sweat, and tears into. The second tier is for those who want access to exclusive videos uh, not available to the public that I do every week. I'll put up one, at least one, uh, little about three-minute video of correct sentence structure knowledge that's from an angle that is not publicly available. But no fear, you individuals in the public there who don't want to join, or you think everything should just be free and given away, there are over 400 videos on this channel. Nothing is hidden, nothing is classified, all the knowledge is here if you need it. It's right here on this channel. My gift to you, my service to my fellow mankind. And of course, if you want to do a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar workshop, contact me at the email address listed below and apply for it. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consult. And that's just to establish a geometric level playing field of communication where I see you, you see me, and we both talk and credential ourselves. You can ask me whatever you want and I'll do the same with you, 10 to 15 minutes and we'll decide, find out you got what it takes to do this. Thanks, everybody. Peace and salute.